Intel is launching their brand new generation of processors and as always, when we get new CPUs, we also get a range of new motherboards to choose from. Now, the 14th generation of processors is a refresh of the previous generation, so if you already own a 1700 socket motherboard, you don't really need a new one. But you also need to remember that new motherboards also get some new features and they improve every single year, so they still might be very interesting to some of you. So, today I'm going to talk about these uh, six new Z790 motherboards from ASUS, and since I cannot really talk about the 14th gen performance just yet, I'm just going to focus on the overall feature sets that these ASUS motherboards have to offer. Uh, we're going to see what's new, uh, what sets them apart from each other, and basically just figure out which motherboard makes the most sense to you. Let's begin. Since this is a refresh generation of processors, the chipset on all of these motherboards is the same as last year, the Z790. So just like you can reuse a previous generation motherboard for these new CPUs, uh, you can also use these new motherboards for the last two generations of processors if you want to. But it also kind of means that chipset wise, we're not really getting anything new at all. Now Intel is making a push for Wi-Fi 7 while on the old motherboards the standard was 6 and 6E, but other than that it is mostly the same as before. Which doesn't also mean that the boards themselves haven't improved, it just means that it is now up to the motherboard manufacturers to build something that is more interesting than the pure chipset features. So let's see what ASUS put together here. As I said before, I have six different models right here, and I'm going to start with the most basic one, uh, which is the Tough Gaming Z790 Pro Wi-Fi, and then I'm going to work my way down the stack, because uh, just like with previous lineups, brands always try to balance an increase in price with an increase in features. Now, the Tough lineup has come a very long way since it made its first appearance on the market. Uh, together with the Prime models, the Tough models are supposed to be the entry-level boards for the Z790 chipset. But, as you can see here, uh, this is already more high-end than a lot of high-end motherboards from a few years ago. In terms of features, you get four M.2 slots, but only three of them have heat sinks. You get seven fan headers, uh, three addressable RGB headers, uh, two internal USB 2 headers, one USB 3 header, and a 20 gigabit Type-C header for the front panel of your case that should also support fast charging. The IO shield is integrated, as you would expect, and you get eight USB ports total, including a single 20 gigabit one and three 10 gigabit ones. You also get a 2.5 gigabit LAN and Wi-Fi 6E with the new antenna system that just kind of clicks on instead of having to screw it on like it was before. Now, lower-end boards sometimes cheap out on the audio, uh, but the Tough here has a completely decent S1220A audio chip and it includes an optical out as well. What you're missing on the Tough board are some of the more enthusiast features like a hex display and physical buttons, and while the primary PCI slot for your GPU is Gen 5 and ready for whatever the next generation will be, the SSD slots are not. Uh, Gen 5 SSDs don't really make sense for most users just yet, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, you also don't get any RGB on the board itself, so if you were making a nice blackout build, uh, this motherboard will fit very well. What you do get is some of the nicer quality of life features that were added to the uh, higher end models in previous generations of RNG motherboards, but now they're available in all of the models from this lineup. So you do get the Q release button to easily remove your graphics card, uh, you get AI overclocking in the BIOS, and you get little latches on your M.2 SSD slots so you don't need to use those tiny little screws. Now, I kind of do wish they also made the heat sinks too less like Gigabyte did on some of their models in this generation, because right now ASUS does save you from using some of those tiny screws, but you still need a small screwdriver to be able to remove the heat sinks. But, you know, that is just a minor thing that I would like to see improved. 
On the VRM side, you get 16 60 amp power stages for the CPU cores with large metal heat sinks on top of them. Now, realistically, that should already be more than enough, uh, even for an i9 with a bit of an overclock. But if you plan to do some extreme overclocking, I would wait to see some proper VRM testing before doing that on this motherboard. Still, I think the Tough Gaming is a very well-rounded board, as long as you don't need those enthusiast features or maybe more connections than this board has to offer. So for a typical high-end gaming rig, it should be more than enough. Now, the next step up would be the ROG Strix lineup, and I have both the Z790A Wi-Fi 2 and the Z790E Wi-Fi 2. And even though they sound very similar, they actually have pretty different feature sets. The Z790A is the first step up from the tough gaming board and the most obvious change is the color scheme. Now I really like the white and black theme and this board also gets some RGB to go with that. The Strix A builds from the same feature set we got with the Tough model, but it adds several extras. So here you get five M.2 SSD slots instead of four. Uh, all of them are covered with heat sinks and you get eight fan headers instead of seven. On the rear IO, you get four extra USB 2 ports coming up to a total of 12. Plus you get the option to flash your BIOS without a CPU or memory. Even though I guess you'll probably never need to use that feature because the 15th gen will probably require completely new motherboards. Anyway, we also get Wi-Fi 7 and I really like the fact that on the white motherboard, they added a white antenna that also has white cables. So if your whole build is white, the antenna will fit perfectly next to it. The power delivery gets a slight upgrade from the Tough motherboard as well, and it goes to 1670 amp power stages for the V core. Uh, the only features that you're missing on this uh, Strix A board are the hex display, physical buttons, and just like with the Tough Gaming, the M.2 slots are all Gen 4, so you don't get Gen 5 SSD support either. Now, next we have the Z790E Strix 2, which is another really impressive looking motherboard. And here we finally start seeing some of those hobby features that the previous models were missing. It again takes the basis of the model before it and just starts adding some features to add a bit more value. So this one does have a hex display and it does come with physical buttons, which a lot of people really care about, including myself. And it has five M.2 slots, but this time around, one of them is actually Gen 5. The Z790E does add another USB 3 header, which is great for cases with four USB 3 ports on the front. And it adds another internal USB 2 header as well for a total of three, uh, which is actually more than the models above half. Uh, that makes this board particularly interesting if you have a lot of accessories that require these headers, uh, like all-in-one coolers, for example, or additional RGB hardware. The rear I.O. is improved as well. You still get 12 USB ports total, but now all of them are at least 10 gigabit, with one of them being 20 gigabit. And of course, the power delivery gets another upgrade. Uh, 18 110 amp power stages is way more than you will ever realistically need, and you will be frying your CPU before your VRMs get anywhere near hot. Next in line is the Dark Hero, and this is probably the nicest looking all black Z790 board on the market. Uh, every time a new Hero board comes out, they somehow manage to make it look just a bit better than last year. Now, traditionally, the Hero boards have been the go-to options for anyone looking for a real enthusiast motherboard. Uh, but like I said before, that position is under a lot of pressure right now. Uh, the Strix C is already offering a lot of those enthusiast features and it comes with overkill VRMs. So the Hero or the Dark Hero here uh, really needs to find an angle to try and offer some other form of value. Uh, going even more overkill on the power delivery, for example, doesn't add that much more. So this this has 20 slightly higher quality 90 amp power stages just for DV core, which is again more than you will ever need. So the three main things that you do get are a proper backplate, which does help if you're handling your motherboard a lot like uh, reviewers or like overclockers do. You do get a selection of extra headers for custom water loops and the rear IO now includes two Thunderbolt connections for 40 gigabit external devices. Now, that's not really useful for most users, but if you do want Thunderbolt, it is actually a very rare feature. 
But where previous boards basically just added features on top of the last one, uh, the Dark Hero takes a few steps back from the Strix E in some way. So the third internal USB 2 header is gone and the 20 gigabit USB port on the back is gone as well. And uh, Thunderbolt ports will double as a 10 gigabit USB, even though they can technically do 40. If you have an external Thunderbolt SSD, the Dark Hero is way faster, but with a 20 gigabit USB external SSD, uh, only the front panel connector will support its full speed. So the Dark Hero's target audience is really shifting more from uh, all around PC hardware fan to people who just want Thunderbolt or plan to do custom water cooling builds. And if you do want to go that way and you also want a white build, then you can go for the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 formula. Now almost every part of this motherboard is exactly the same as the Dark Hero. Uh, the PCB and most of the parts look the same and most of the connections are exactly the same. Uh, there are a couple of changes, but they're all very minor. So the formula has 20 slightly higher rated power stages, 105 amps versus 90. But as I said before, the Dark Hero was already an overkill. The rear I.O. has a 5 gigabit Ethernet connection instead of 2.5, and the formula adds a little 2-inch OLED screen uh, right above the GPU, which is kind of cute. But other than that, it is a white version of the Dark Hero with the addition of that water block on the top of the VRMs. Now, in the past, Asus worked with EK, on those, uh, but I don't see EK branding anymore, so I guess they decided to go their own way instead. The next board is the ROG Maxima Z790 Apex Encore, and this one doesn't really fit with the rest of the stack because this is a hardcore overclocking board with an even more extreme power delivery setup, a two dim setup for even higher memory overclocks, and lots of little overclocking features like switches and voltage measuring points for anyone who wants to just go above and beyond trying to beat those overclocking records. Plus, you also get a separate fan bracket with a fan for your memory. I mean, you can use it as a daily driver. It does get five SSD slots and a good amount of USB ports on the back for regular use. But just remember that this doesn't have any power delivery for the iGPU uh, if you for some reason planned on using that. So you cannot use the iGPU on CPUs that come with one. And if you use Intel Quick Sync for video editing, uh, that won't work either. So realistically, if you're not into extreme overclocking, uh, this board doesn't really make sense for you. Now, while most of these boards do look great in terms of what they offer, they're also very expensive. Uh, street pricing might end up looking a bit better eventually, uh, but today at launch, only the tough gaming board will be less than 400 euros or dollars. And that is just a lot of money for a motherboard and way more than what we used to pay for high-end boards a few years ago. But there's this little thing called inflation. And to be fair, you're also getting a much better product with this lower end uh, tough today than we did with higher end boards before. And as much as I don't really like these prices, uh, it was already the same with the Z690 and previous Z790 motherboards, as well as competing motherboards on the AMD side. So if you want a cheaper motherboard, you will have to look at cheaper chipsets uh, like the B660 or the B760, for example. So overall, unless you need some specific features for your personal use, like a ton of USB ports, uh, more than four NVMe SSDs or Gen 5 SSD support, uh, there really isn't a reason to spend more than uh, what the tough gaming costs, even for i9 builds. Uh, it might be the lowest model in this stack, but it really is a solid all-around motherboard, and I really don't think most of you will be missing out on anything relevant if you go for the tough gaming. If you do want a board that just offers everything in terms of features, uh, and it has all the bells and whistles to use as a hobby board, the ROG Strix E stands out to me the most, and it is basically what the Hero used to be. 
It gets you the hex display, a physical buttons, extra SSD slots, Gen 5 SSD support, and more internal headers to handle every high-end build and whatever future upgrades you want to add. It is expensive, but it has pretty much everything and it does offer better value than the boards that are positioned above it. So in my opinion, high-end boards like the Dark Hero and the Formula are very, very nice if you uh, do want to go for something niche like a custom loop, or you really need that Thunderbolt support, or if you just really like them and you happen to have a ton of money to spare. And I know that that's also a big reason why some people buy these fancier motherboards, which is completely fine, but if you're trying to keep it a bit more reasonable, then the Strix E is probably what you want to aim for. Anyway, that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and please do let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about these motherboards and if you're interested in other brands, I will be going over some of the competition in the next few days as well as the new CPUs that will launch tomorrow. So uh, make sure you click that subscribe button to never miss my future uploads. Bye all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.